Hello everyone, it is me, Pui, and I have been sent to yet another room of my house to film, but at least there's a panda here. As promised, this week we're going to be looking at the Obelisk 17 matches for my Zomb Beatdown deck. Here's the deck if you haven't seen it, and you can also check out the deck tech for it in the up there part. For those of you who don't know, Obelisk is the resulting bracket of the Academy League, an asynchronous set of brackets starting at Slifer Red level, the winner of one goes to a Brawl Yellow level, and finally there is an 8-man Obelisk Blue bracket, the winner of which gets an invite to the GOAT Format World Championship. If you want to check out the Academy League yourself, make Make sure to go to the GOAT Format Europe server in the description below. Don't worry, it's not just for Europeans. This particular obelisk bracket had myself, Moxies, Mark MPS, Lucas, Alefia, Cipolla, Nocklin, and AJT BLS. I myself had to play Alefia 2, then Moxies, then Nocklin, and then Mark. The matches I ended up playing did a good job showing a lot about what the deck can and can't do, so we're gonna take a look at those now. But first, Thank you so, so, so much for 200 subscribers. That's right, this channel is not two months old and I've already hit 200 subscribers. To thank you so much, I want to announce a giveaway. That's right, at 300 subscribers, we're going to be announcing a giveaway on this channel. It's going to be super cool. I've already got it planned. Make sure to subscribe, hit the like button, share with your friends, leave a comment. We're trying to get to 300 subs as fast as possible so you can get some cool stuff. But without further ado, let's get on to the matches. So round one, I have against Alefia 2, and that's somewhat intimidating, because he's a really good player who could be playing potentially anything. But I get to play and draw a dust to my opener, and I get to see that he's playing Harpy Beatdown as his deck for this obelisk. I'm really excited about that, because the matchup's easy, but I'm also the one who was hoping he would play Harpies and asked him to do so. So to get to see him do it and to get to face that deck is really fun. Looking at his hand, I get rid of the only monster that can attack me directly, and he doesn't have much of an ability to put pressure on me. He summons the Zombira as a defense, passes the turn, and I draw Rat. With this rat, I know exactly what to do. I summon it, crash it into Turtle, and then get Vampire Lord off the Turtle. I can tell from his hand he's not going to be answering that Vampire Lord anytime soon, and he's now shrunk his Zumbira because it's crashed twice into my monsters. I continue to attack with the Vampire Lord over and over again, turn after turn. I have an Exiled Force for his first bird face and a Ring of Destruction for his second. He never really manages to answer the Vampire Lord, and eventually game one is over. Game 2 is rapidly simplified by my duo, Warrior Lady, and three spell and trap removal cards. He's left with a bird face which he normal summons, and I manage to top deck a turtle into cocky. Destroying the bird face, he gets a Cyber Harpy Lady, draws a Mobius that he can't use, and decides to pass the turn rather than losing his lady. I get another free hit with the cocky before he goes brain control into Mobius and hits me. I have a brain control and a mirror force, so I use the brain control to hit the Mobius, set the mirror force hoping to protect myself, and then crack back with any monster I draw. He of course draws exactly Mystical Space Typhoon to get rid of the Mirror Force and it's on to Game 3. Game 3 has a lot more crazy back and forth. Alephia opens absolutely nuts with Duo, Charity, and Heavy Storm. Fortunately for me, Duo puts my Ryukaki right where I want it, and he questionably storms a single set Dust Tornado. He then summons Emissary to attack me directly and sets two of his own before passing the turn. I am completely convinced that the last card in his hand at this point is Mobius the Frost Monarch, and my goal in this game is to make sure that that isn't summoned by any means necessary. So I summon Virus and use its effect on a monster I know searches a floater. Then I attack directly and he lets it through. He then summons that searched Sonic Duck and attacks over my Virus with it, but I don't really need it anymore so I let it go without any response. I draw a rat and attack the rat into the Sonic Duck to go for a cocky or a Vampire Lord. He uses Sakuretsu on the rat, and at this point I feel safe enough to use Call on the cocky to continue my aggression. He uses Solemn on the call, which tells me that his set is probably a bluff, because if it wasn't a bluff, he would have monster removal or spell and trap removal, since Call is very vulnerable. I Solemn his Solemn back and start attacking over him. He then summons Birdface and flips that set card, which was a brain control to try to deal me lethal, but I have a Sakuretsu armor to get rid of his Birdface, and I'll then get the Koki back to do a crack back and kill him. He does, however, happen to have Mirror Force, and I manage to draw a Mirror Force of my own. So my Koki gets Mirror Forced, he summons a Harpy Lady, and that gets Mirror Forced, and then I top deck Kaiku, and that's the match. 
Round two is against Moxies, who is on the Kree Goat Control. And testing this matchup was absolutely horrible, and I was desperately hoping to avoid it. But if I manage to keep a skill drain on the field, it gets way easier. Not only do I go first and open with a drain, but I have three answers to Decree in my hand as well. I start with Regeki Break to test the waters, and he goes Tomato Set Decree. I top rat and slam it into the tomato. He gets another tomato while I go into Turtle and then Vampire Lord, since the extra attack on Kalki is not as relevant in this matchup. The second tomato gets Sangan, and he tries to use Decree in the end phase after I set my drain, but it's broken just as quick as it arrives. On this turn, he takes my Vampire Lord and sets Faith. What follows is one of the nastiest plays I made all Obelisk. I use Book of Life on the turtle I just discarded to Regeki Break to crash it into my Stolen Lord. I get cocky off of this before using Skill Drain followed by MST on the steel. I attack over the now negated Faith and the Sangan. Sangan gets Tomato, which he sets next turn only for me to Nobleman it. A turn later, he stares at a hand of two useless knocks and a useless meta for tear and goes to game two. A lot happened in game two and yet nothing happened at all. The game was best encapsulated by a turn one pot of greed and I wasn't able to answer his faith for a second pot of greed. The rest of the game he has more threats than I can possibly answer and more defense than I could possibly get through in one to two turns, even with an Ashura Priest at the ready. It is worth mentioning that my deck can't really recover from a situation like this? Yes. Do I think most aggro decks would have lost in this exact same situation? Also yes. Game 3, my hand is two dust shoots, a cyborg card, and a graceful cherry, classifying it as none other than the nuts. I play Kaiku and both my dust shoots before passing back and shooting his only monster in standby. Not only is my hand insanely good, but Moxie's hand is insanely bad, so I know it's on me to close this out as fast as possible. I have charity whenever I want to answer anything he finds, so I get to attacking. I shoot a second monster, leaving him with the same useless hand before drawing Pot of Greed into Turtle and Solemn. The two monsters attack, and I set the Solemn, thinking this game is good as over. Moxie storms my Solemn, then steals my Kaiku before setting a card. I go for Mobius, expecting the win, but to my chagrin, he's top a scapegoat. See all these cards that were useless before? Yeah. They're pretty useful now. This spurs my charity into action as I try to find an answer to two metas and a creature swap. To this end, I find a Book of Moon, MST, and my Brain Control. I attack two of the tokens and set all before passing. There are a lot of ways the game can go from here, but the plan is to hopefully bait out a meta for Thousand Eyes Restrict, let it steal my Mobius, book it, make him swap, and then steal the swapped Kaiku back for a big swing. Things start out as expected, but then he summons a Breaker. I panic and click my Book of Moon before I can even tell what's happened. This lets him use the swap on the remaining Kaiku to leave me with nothing. At the time, I was absolutely convinced that I had just lost an unlosable game, but I still have my brain control to make a big play eventually. I set Lady to get rid of Tear, and with that all the goats and their related threats are gone for now, leaving me to deal with a Breaker and my own Kaiku. I top a turtle to get cocky and attack over the Breaker. I'm setting up to do my brain control play next turn, but he draws another goddamn scapegoat. He changes the Kaiku to defense and I have no choice but to attack it, and accept that another tear is coming. Indeed it does, and he slams me in the face before setting a monster and passing. Of all things, I finally use my brain control to take his tear on a full board. I tend to tribute summon another cocky with it, but I am so terrified that the set is Magician of Faith for a third metamorphosis that I use my leftover MST to destroy the cocky to activate Tear's effect first. I was pretty confident he wouldn't top deck an answer to an attack in a decree deck, so it was best to use my backward removal in this way. This exact situation would come up again later. Though it turned out to be a magical merchant, he tops deck a Faith next turn, but it's too late at that point. I've drawn both an Assure Priest and a Call of the Haunted while under the Terrors, letting me put up 5 total attacks on the board in the following turn. Why he didn't just summon BLS is beyond me, but he later told me that he was that scared of Skill Drain, which I think says a lot about the card. In any case, I am on to Winner's Finals. Waiting for me in the Winner's Finals was Nock Lin, also known as Pretty Girl Uwu. Lin crushed their first two opponents with a Decree Aggro using both Tomato and Spy to try to get Zaborg out. This matchup is similar to the Moxie's matchup, only I don't have to worry about goats, which is huge. Even more than Moxie's though, this game 1 really shows off the power of Skill Drain, as I resolve one early along with a Dust Shoot for a Tomato, and Lin basically can't do anything for the rest of the game. I find a ring just in time for getting in that last damage just as Lin tries to start looping a Set Serpent and we're on to game 2. Game 2 is similarly a cruise. Lin opens Set Tomato, Set Decree. I break the Decree before attacking over the Tomato, then ring the new Tomato and stand by face as so Zabor can't be summoned. Lin sets a Spy, which gets killed by Exiled Force and Breaker attacks again. Lin summons an Abyss Soldier to beat over the Breaker, which is then beat over itself by a Rat into Turtle into Cocky. 
This is removed by Virus discarding Sinister Serpent, and I once again return fire by beating over it with Kaiku. A plus two since I get to banish the Serpent. I set a book which saves me from a play of BLS plus Premature on Virus. Looking at my hand, I already have two answers to both of these cards next turn. I just need to Crash Rat, Crash Turtle into Cocky, use Cocky's battle effect to destroy BLS, and then use Storm to kill Prima which kills the Virus. I draw a knock and it seems a lot simpler to just use that on the BLS and then attack over the Virus. That way I can save the Heavy in case I need it for back row. From this point on, the rest of the bracket was a waking nightmare. Saving Storm was an entirely unnecessary play because Lin barely plays any back row to stop attacks. They do, however, play plenty of set monsters that are not inherently answered by Cocky's effect. 375 out of 377 times this play would have gone unpunished. But this game, Lin draws exactly Gravekeeper Spy to survive to next turn with a body, where Lin then draws exactly Zabort to destroy my Cocky and attack over my Kaiku. It was a horrendous upset that should have been an easy 2-0, and I don't even have the luxury of pinning it entirely on luck. Going into Game 3, my confidence is distinctly shaken on account of Game 2's end, which is why I set Ring with my monster despite having Heavy Storm in my hand. Lin plays a Swords of Revealing Light, which I knew was in the deck but wasn't expecting, and sets another back row along with a Spy. I'm forced to Heavy with my own Ring on the field. Lin's hand has three Monarchs in it, and that Ring could have helped keep them from hitting the field, or if they did hit the field. At the very least, I have an Exiled Force for the set Spy, but when Tomato is set a turn later, I have no ring to kill the target in standby phase like I did for Game 2. Attacking with Kaiku before Rat would have also achieved a similar goal because Rat could crash into future Tomatoes, so nothing was on the field in the end. Instead, what could have been a hand of useless Monarchs turns into support plowing through me in Game 3. And to add insult to injury, I draw not one, but both of my Ryukakis. Once the two get duoed, I know I'm off to the loser side. Going into loser's finals, I was scared I would have to play Moxes again, but Mark MPS came through with this Chaos Turbo. Turbo is one of the matchups the deck was built for, so I'm thinking this should be an easy win. <laughs> Game 1 was Turbo doing Turbo things, and my deck somehow having nothing to do about it. Mark sets a Deco, which I have to attack directly over, followed by a Spy. Though I read it as such, I'm too scared to commit my virus into his sets, so I attack with Kaiku to a predictable end. He then proceeds to play the entire Trinity in one turn. Meanwhile, I need to destroy my own Kaiku in the midst of using the virus, which opens him up to use BLS along with stealing my virus to take the game. In Game 2, I T-set, and Mark proceeds to set his entire hand in one go. This is the last thing you want to see when playing an aggro deck in GOAT format because it means Mark sided all of the battle traps. In a situation like this, I need to work carefully to coax out each trap in an order that leaves me in a favorable position, and Breaker can hopefully push me over the edge. I think I did a pretty good job at this. I attack a monster with Rat, and this eats his first Saku. He tributes summons into Mobius, and I opt not to Solemn this because I suspect he'll just Solemn back and I need the life points. The following turn, I play Charity into the first Solemn, Snatch on Mobius into a second Solemn, then T-Set, Turtle, and Ring. The Turtle turns into Cocky, and the Ring meets a seven tools. This is it. It's Breaker's time to shine. If I can hit another battle trap, I can crash the Cocky into the Mobius and send Breaker in for the win. Unbeknownst to me, his sets are two battle traps and a now useless Ring. But as the most recent card said, I am dead set convinced that the first two were bluffs and the third was a mirror force. I then proceed to run into every battle trap in Mark's deck of which I have one of for every monster I pray to take the game swing with. Until ultimately he attacks over a booked virus with a spy and I draw Pot of Greed into a heavy storm and a vampire lord. My obelisk run ends at third place with a 2-2 two two record. Fuck! 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 Oh! So now that you've seen the matches, let's talk a bit about the deck. Certainly I'd say that without a doubt, Skill Drain proved itself to be an insane card in this deck, and I'd go to say that this is probably the best shell for a Skill Drain. You can play things like Goblet, Attack Force, and Zimbira, but those cards honestly kind of suck on their own. Like sure, you can play a Goblet Attack Force and attack for 2300 and it'll go into defense and then it dies. You can play a Zimbira, people certainly do in the side, but it's not doing anything on its own. The amount of defensive and offensive options you have with Rat and Turtle both at three, along with those big zombies, are immense, especially when you add in Swap. 
Not only that, but those top attacking monsters, our big zombie targets at the end, still keep effect through skill drain because both of them involve the graveyard. Speaking of those effects, let's talk about Vampire Lord and Cocky, how insane they are. We had a match where I could have, but didn't, destroy a BLS with a Ryu Cocky. We had a match or two taken over completely by Vampire Lord. Those cards are really, really powerful when used in the right position. And lastly, this deck has way better staying power against aggressive decks than others while being an aggressive deck itself, which is certainly what I tried to build it for in the first place as a reaction to a rise in warriors in the meta. So obviously you can definitely tank in a bunch of hits by your average beat sticks using rat and turtle all day, which is what I did against Lin in the first couple of turns of the second match, and of course most of the first match as well. The deck can really hold its own against most aggressive decks, which you also saw against the Lefia. Now let's talk about the weakness. While the monsters are one of the greatest strengths of Zombie Beatdown, they are also the greatest weakness. That is to say, if you draw more than three monsters in your hand, the chances of winning drastically decrease, especially if any of those monsters are the tribute monsters. The deck is clunky. It has a normal summon and an attack, and it really relies on the spells and the traps to actually make moves happen. You saw in the game against Mark that I didn't manage to pull a trap dust shoot or a skill drain, and I greatly suffered for it. I've also played a lot of games where you just draw a bunch of recruiters and maybe kaikus or something, and you just can't do anything. You summon one monster at a time, your opponent plays basically right around you, and you die. This can possibly be mitigated by lowering the monster count, but it kind of has to be exactly what it is, or you start not drawing monsters, and some of our cards do nothing without monsters. So the need to have a perfect balance of hand is a little less flexible than, say, Warriors, where most of the monsters really do something on their own, and you also have access to reinforcement of the army. Obviously, it was pretty clear from my fear and my testing that the deck really struggles against control decks, so if those are increasing, this deck may be on the down lows. Uh, of course, you have Goats, which makes Swap worse and makes attacking really difficult. Tear is a little hard to out for this deck if they get Decree up, and of course Decree stops most of our trap lineup. You can fix the siding. I'd say after playing this tournament, Ashura Priest is not necessary, but you definitely need to throw it Wang Hu. I was trying to avoid playing Wang Hu because it is a non-bow with both our Skill Drain, which turns off your Wang Hu, and also our Recruiters, because now we can't really normal summon them safely or they'll just get destroyed. However, the more I played both before and after this tournament, I realized when Wenghu's really fine in the matches where you're bringing it in. I've sacked control players completely with Wenghu, and I'd say it's pretty well worth playing. It also really helps against Panda, which is worth mentioning is a really bad matchup for the deck as is. We have some spell and trap removal, but we only have so much. So without some adjustment, Panda can still be rough if they get a floodgate on us long enough or if they play a big enough monster. This could be fixed by potentially adding a tribute to the Doom, potentially over Regeki Break. You can also add more spell and trap removal, maybe put in both Mobius, put in a third, probably not. You can also put in a third Dust Tornado in the side if you want. You can play some amount of Death Wombat, that could work. But it's worth mentioning that the deck as is isn't perfect against Burn, even with the creature swaps and even with the big beat sticks. And that's about all I have to say about the deck. I think if you looked at the matches close enough, you'll see it's a clear contender for the current meta as a good rogue aggro deck. If you want to give it a try, I'll put the link in the description again, both the original and the alternate version. And I hope you have a lovely day. Make sure you subscribe for that giveaway.